The good liars. The good liars. This is boring. Boring. Oh, boring. I will die standing in my boots. Herschel, yeah. I got you some condoms. What made everyone so weird and sad that they they had to come out here? Oh, Mr. President, welcome to the show. We are the good liars, and we are going to tell the truth. Trust us. Welcome to the Good Liars Tell the Truth. I am Jason Selvig. And I'm Devram Stiefler, and we are the Good Liars. And we may be the Good Liars, but on this show, we are going to tell the truth. And the truth is, Devram, we have fucked up this recording so many times. So many times, and so <laughs> For bad. Various reasons. And so irrevocably. Uh, although we're gonna, here we are, we're actually doing it. We're actually we're gonna redeem it. ourselves on this. But we just did, just so people know, it's just the kind of mindset no. we're in. We just re- talked for 10 minutes, had a great conversation, realized we weren't recording. So <laughs> After all of these uh, technical problems. Yeah. But, well, let's just get into it. Before we go, Devram, I, I gotta ask you a very yeah. important question. And as always on this show, I want you to tell me the truth. Okay, Honesty. promise me? Yep, honestly. I would like key. you to... St- to tell me your favorite name that ends with M, M. That's I am. Favorite name. Favorite first name. Okay. First name. Uh, I'm Just thinking one. Jim. I'm thinking Jim. Jim. Okay. All right. What's your favorite kind of dance? You know, there's like the jitterbug. There's the uh, whoa, 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 whoa. So whoa, just whoa. A, your typical slow dancing. Just slow uh, dance. the re- okay. regular slow dancing, the end of a bar mitzvah or whatever you got. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Well, getting- maybe this is a better way to go there. What's your favorite thing that divides uh, a room? There's usually four of them. Oh, four okay. Them. All right. A Tim Walls. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Devram. You, you got where I was trying to go there. I did. I mean, okay. Well, how lucky yeah, was yeah, that? Yeah. We ended up That's, there eventually. That is the big news this week. Vice President yeah. Kamala Harris picked Minnesota Governor Tim Walls as her VP pick. We're going to dive into that decision, what it means for the presidential race. But before we get into that, we want to remind everyone, you can support us on Hero Hero for exclusive bonus episodes uh, for just $5 a month. That's herohero.co slash the good liars. But before it should be we- noted, It should be what? noted that if you subscribe, like you're helping send us to these places that we go. Uh, yes. So true. We, we appreciate that. And you can get full episodes of the podcast- it's true. At hero, it's true. Hero.co slash the good liars. But before we dive into this VP pick, Debram, I want to talk about the the bear in the room. The yeah. the dead bear cub with a bicycle in the room right now. Okay, see, I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure other people do, but yeah. I sure do know what you're talking about this time. I just want to read a, a New York Times headline here. And this is this is obviously real. Everyone's seen this, but it's still it's not real to me. You know, like pro wrestling, it's still real to me, damn it. This right. still feels fake to me because it's so fucking crazy. So you crazy. just slipped that in there. You just slipped that in there. Your first pro I got wrestling more reference Don't worry. of the show. Don't worry. Okay. So this is from the New York Times. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. admits he left a dead bear in Central Park. Mr. Kennedy, an independent presidential candidate, confessed to dropping off the bear cub 10 years ago and making it appear that a bike had hit the animal. So we're we're at that stage of the campaign where the the dead bear cab cub uh, it's funny stories start leaking how history out. History repeats itself. Yeah. So every time <laughs> in the campaign, you get a story about abducting a dead carcass from a, an upstate <laughs> New York road. Do you know the, some of the details of this? Can I t- can I tell you what I read this morning, or do you okay, know well, all, all, how all of it unfolded? What's yes, I do know how all of it unfolded. But could you, can we watch this video first? Yes. Uh, is, is a video of RFK Jr. and Roseanne, of course, Roseanne Barr. Of course. Of course. It, she'd, she'd have to be involved in this in some way. Gotta be. Uh, here, Again, history video repeats video. itself, so of course. <laughs> I wasn't drinking, of course, but people were drinking with me who thought this was a good idea. And I said, well, I had an old bike in my car that somebody asked me to get rid of it. I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. <laughs> <laughs> fun, yeah. funny for people. And it'll be funny it'll for be people. It'll be funny for people. It'll be funny for people. It'll be so oh funny. my God. It's just like, I just first. Yeah, if you want to say, say the details of the story that. So, that correct you want any, to any about. part of this you want as sure. I go. But sure. I, I just was was reading a little bit about this this morning. He had been up in upstate New York falconing 
with Correct. friends, which yeah. I think that's relatable. We it? all know what that means, what that looks like, and why you would do it. And it's probably a very cheap activity, something we've all done before. Um, he, driving home, he saw someone in front of him, or dr- driving back to New York City, saw someone in front of him hit and kill a bear cub. Mm, right? Sad. Then yeah. instead of doing what many of us would do, which I don't know, um, call 911 or some sort of animal services or Debrum, you somehow would drive try on. and clear it. You would get it. You would get it. If it was <laughs> off the road, I don't know. But you, no, no, but okay. if, you, if you're not sure it's dead yet or something, you, okay. Okay. You, might, you might feel the need to do something. No, I'm not, not going to say what you would do, and I wasn't implying I don't, I don't what I would be do. Told I don't want anyone coming do. after me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry um, about that. So he, instead of doing what, what many people would do, which is those things I listed, he decides he's going to put the bear in his trunk, that there are apparently laws that allow for eating of roadkill. Um, and so he, which I support, is, which I support. Which you support. Why not? Why not? Why not? Sure, sure. Funny that he knows these laws, um, that, that he's ready for a situation just like this. You see a bear get hit by a van in front of you, you're going to put that bear in your trunk. <sighs> he also puts the bear's mouth around his hand pretending to be bitten, which he later he's says weird. that could be when he got the worm, the brain worm which he says he has. The desecration uh, of the corpse, yeah. Desecration yeah. of the corpse, little brain worm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then he goes to New York City for dinner at Peter Luger's Steakhouse, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, yep. And yep. he then, dinner goes on for a while. He's not thinking about the bear in his trunk, right? He's got a dinner to enjoy. Then at some point, he realizes dinner has gone so long that he is going to be late to the airport. This is where the story falls apart. I don't think Roseanne calls him on this because she's not trying to grill him. She's just enjoying his company. Uh, he says that he's running late to the airport, so he decides to go to Central Park because he, does, he doesn't know how to dispose of this bear, and he's got an old bike in his car, and he decides that the funniest thing to do because so many pedestrians uh, have recently been killed by bikes with the new bike lanes, so he his sense of humor gets going with that. Uh, tragic news. He decides to put the bear there next to the bike and make it look like it was a bike accident. And then I guess so, go to the airport. So what you're you're saying that the problem with the story is because when you're, I did this didn't occur to me, but it makes perfect sense what you're saying here. He, I don't know what it, he was flying out of, but if you're in Williamsburg, right by the BQE there, you're going to hop on. You're not going. You're, you're going to no go airport. to. You're going to JFK or LaGuardia. You're going to stay in Brooklyn. You're not going to go. There's no no airport. Newark. There's no airport. Would, is, would not that be would on the take way. you yeah. by Central Park. And the to to imagine. Uh, well, what about to, Westchester? What about Westchester? What if he was flying out of Westchester, Javon? I guess, but when when okay. is it going to make the most sense to park, drag a bear out of your car? Now you, I understand. You're maybe you're not wanting to leave the bear in the car. But that was your choice. That was the choice you made when you put the but bear in the car. But he had a bike in the, in the car. car. I don't know how you have an old bike if it's a rental car. How do you have an old bike and a bear in your car? Because his whole thing right. was like the rental car. I thing. feel like you got to so, trace it back to the brain worm. The Maybe that explains all of this and, and why the story isn't adding up. I don't know. Do you think there was drinking involved? I mean, doesn't this sound like such a drunk person Well, thing he to said do? that his friends were drinking and that he wasn't drinking because he was sober at the time. But yeah, I, I just want to know, number one, the most important question, do you think this is going to help or hurt his chances at the White House? It remains to be seen. Okay, I mean, right. some things that you don't think would help um, can help. Some things that you would think would help don't, like Trump almost getting assassinated. You would think it would have helped, but he managed to make it not seem to matter to anybody because he started I like that he was like, like trying to own this. He was like, I'm going to get in front of this. I'm going to... Can we get Roseanne over here? She's like a pretty normal person that hasn't like said yeah. some like terrible things in the last couple of years. Let's get her over and I can tell the story to her. And even during during the video, my favorite part is he's telling this and she's just like, what? Like, this is crazy. Like during I it, know. the looks that she has is like, You're right. what? What? It's kind of like she's looking like, like the story is freaking her out a little bit, but also they're being videotaped. And I think she, she's kind of like, why am I being? Why? Videotaped? What's Why going are you? on here? Well, and, uh, I think she knows. She probably you agreed this... to get videotaped. But I don't. I don't think she knew he was going to tell this story. I. I also think if she's like other other people, some of us were aware of tw- in 2014 when the stories of the bear found in Central Park circulated around. Do you remember that? 
I, I don't remember it. I I, I, I was trying it. to like yeah. I was like I was like a, the I feel like I remember people like making jokes about it, but like I don't remember the story being a big deal. And it's funny because like I read the New York Times every single day, and I don't remember this story at all. And I uh, and like I, Gothamness too. I was always reading, you know, when Gothamness was really good. I was yeah. that was a website I was checking all the time. So like I don't know. It's it's weird that I don't I don't remember this. Maybe it's just my memory is going. It's more about me. Maybe yeah, it's my I mean, brain it was worms. it was a brief thing. It was just a couple of days. People were like the right. Central Park Bear, you know, just an odd little moment. Well, <clears throat> RFK Jr. was responsible it was for it. That's future so president strange. RFK Jr. Yeah. Uh, do, and so, do you think this costs him the VP? Ticket like Harris was like, oh, I think RFK is, is the guy. Oh no, this bear yeah, story. He, he did what to a bear? Pull, oh he man, pulled the rug right out from under himself here. Uh, yeah, he was a shoe in. I'm sure Harris was gonna pick him, and then she was like, if this, what else? You know, right? Well, there's that's all. There's gonna there. be some for the beach most part, whale yeah. story, yeah. and he's gonna be like, we were out fishing, we. I had, whale, I had sex with a whale. I had sex with a dead whale. Yeah. I don't know. It's not the craziest thing in the it's world. The yeah, thing. Roseanne, where are you going? Where are you going? Listen <laughs> to the rest of the story. Come back here. Yeah. Come back here. Well, uh, let's get Darlene in here from Roseanne and somebody else to talk to. You. Oh, she um, would be so snarky about it. She would be. She would be snarky about it. She always has some great one-liners. Okay, let's yeah. let's dive into the 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 meat of this episode, Devram. It doesn't look like the VP pick is going to be RFK Jr. Unfortunately for him. Uh, yeah, but. It is Tim Walz and just the New York Times, what they, they wrote about today. Uh, Minnesota governor, former high school teacher, National Guard member, brings to the ticket Midwestern appeal in a plain spoken way of talking about Donald Trump. When you got the news this morning, what was your first thought when you heard Tim Walz? Was it, who is this guy? Or I mean, were you excited? I have to confess, I... I didn't know a ton about him, but then he's been in the news the last uh, two or three weeks as this has been discussed, but I thought he wasn't a front runner. I really thought it was it was Shapiro or Kelly. Seemed like that was the only, you know, he briefly was in the conversation. Did, did you know that he was being considered in, in that way? I just hadn't heard his name in a week, which is forever in, in this Warp day and age. Uh, yes, I did. I did. He, I mean, he was. He was the. I think he was. He was going to be the. The. It was him and Shapiro were like one and two, going in, and then I and look, I saw this online. Devram, this is something that you know. I you, saw your friends that know with about just Shapiro and Kelly recently. Did, I think in the last you, day it was between the it was between Walls and Shapiro, and that was like the betting odds were. Or that, right. or that. Um, yeah, you know, I have learned like a little bit of a crash course on him in the last two weeks, I guess, as he was kind of introduced through this weird yeah. primary on media, in media, you know, like where people, they're, they're just out there talking to people, uh, sorry, talking talking on, on news programs and things like that. And he grabbed headlines, and we talked about this last week, by calling... Republicans weird by specifically calling mm -hmm. Donald Trump weird. I'm going to pull up this this video of you know he he did this and then it kind of caught on with uh, other other Democrats. We're not afraid of weird people. No. <laughs> we we're a little bit creeped out, but we're not afraid. It's not about her or her opponent really. It's no matter what kind of weird stuff they keep saying. Donald Trump has been resorting to some wild lies about my record and some of what he and his running mate are saying. Well, it's just plain weird. Just plain weird. Weird. Just plain weird. Weird. And we talked we talked about this last week. It, it an effective, albeit maybe stolen. Uh, Maybe stolen insult <laughs> for Republicans from some certain people we know. Yeah, yeah, we know well. The but it worked. This has worked. The 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 weird thing has caught on, and not that it necessarily like is going to work in a big, going to sway the election or anything like that. It's worked in a way that I think that ever since Joe Biden stepped aside, you're seeing Democrats who are like energized a little bit now. 
And they're having fun again for the first time in a long time on social media and things like that. There isn't right. like this doom and gloom. There isn't an elephant or a dead bear in the room with uh, with with the Democrats right now. Yeah, um, I, I I think that's really true. Uh, there's like a joy to it, and it's not focused around fighting for you know this is you have to cast your vote or democracy is out the window like this just heaviness which some of those things could be true but this is actually just an, a fun way to poke at them which they haven't had in so long it's been so heavy yeah it's it's interesting because Donald Trump he did try to overturn an election he right. is denying the election results now everything that Joe Biden was saying about like, this is a fight for the soul of the country again. And all these things like this could be the last election. Like it is true, but it also like doesn't kind of encapsulate what Donald Trump is. And yes, he is doing all these things and he is a threat to democracy, but he, let's just be honest, like everything he does is so, so bizarre. How bizarre. How how bizarre. Yeah. How bizarre. How bizarre. Uh, it's been years of this, and I think we're, like, desensitized to it a little bit. And all those serious themes have been kind of drilled into our heads, like you said, for good reason. Like, this stuff has happened. But I think it's, like, and it's allowed me, anyway, to take a step back and and remember what we were first saying when he came onto the scene. Like, this guy? Really? The guy right. who says all this dumb shit and is just so odd and is his you know his his biggest resume point is his show on NBC the apprentice <laughs> like and and it's big decisions there the, though big decisions yeah big decisions uh the odd oddness of it all i think had worn off in place of the seriousness of this all and where is the what's the trajectory of our country now we can remember that like this guy with his painted face and his like, you know, big, weird hair sweep and just the shit he talks about. It's just an odd, it's just weird, and it's it's been in our faces for years. So I don't know. It yeah. actually, I didn't expect it to, but it's actually won me over a little bit. Uh, yeah, and I think we've, we've experienced it. As you know, like, sad about it all. As as for us, we, you know, being at January 6th Sorry, and, like, one experiencing it. Yeah. Get it? Get it? You get it? Did you get it? Yeah, I let, I let it outside, and it's so happy. <laughs> it's outside, and it, there's no blood on my hands, literally. Um, we've we've experienced a little bit of this ourselves, where we were at January 6th. We we're like seeing the stakes of things. You saw, like, yeah. After what what happened after twenty in twenty the twenty twenty election was like traumatic in a way, just like because the country felt like it was falling apart, and you had right. a major political candidate and president refusing to peacefully transfer power, like that is a truly fucked up thing to have happen. And it made this election seem so serious and it still is, but that is not, Joe Biden was not like having fun doing any of this no. stuff. You were just and, holding and your fact, breath and being older, like, can he read this? Yeah, the older he got and the more frail he got and the more tense this got, it made sense for him, but it almost felt like he felt he had to remind people how serious this was and that Donald Trump had to be beaten. And there was never going to be lighthearted because we were all, I think himself included, just hoping to get through the next, you know, public appearance or the next, the next right, hurdle. Right. Like there was can, never going to be he? a time to exhale. <laughs> Is he going to so, talk? Can he talk right now? Is he going to do it? Yeah. Is he going to say... Is he going to call Vice President Trump? Is what, what's going to happen? That was here? so tough. That was his press was conference tough. to win everyone back. It was tough. The whole thing was tough. And I like Joe Biden. I want to say that I just I like him. I really do like him. I think he's a, actually like really wants to be a good person, and that's well, why it, the whole thing was how so many tough. People, with him backing up. How many people have you asked for marriage advice, and they've said, "Let me talk to you about that." You know what I mean? How many people in your life? Joe Biden is one of them. You can count him. Joe Biden is amongst, one of them. I guess that's true. He's also the only person who said, I, uh, I'm beginning to see why your wife left you. Just if we're going to be, just to play both sides here, he did did say that. Yeah, I'm going to give him the Your, wife left, your wife left you. Your wife left uh, you. So the, the other observation that uh, Governor Wall said about Trump was, he said, have you ever seen Trump laugh and a not- when 
he he laughs, but when he laughs, he's laughing at someone, not with someone. Right. Uh, and do you, what, how do you feel about that observation? Number one, and then I think it's I think it's um, it's good. It strikes at the core of like what we think of, of you know good people and bad people. And I have a feeling they they tested that one out and it's been thought of before. It wasn't just didn't just come out. It wasn't just a natural. What? No, thing. everything's uh, everything's organic in politics. You're right. That being said, I think. Uh, I think it's the smart way to go. It kind of goes along with the weird thing. It's like, what kind of person is this? Stop talking about this like threat to democracy, which will have to be mentioned and people will talk about as it gets closer to the election. But like, what kind of person is this? It's the kind of person you want like around, you want in your lives again for four years that you trust. So I, yeah. I think it's a good line, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so now that he's the the pick, Trump let out a let out. He let a slip <laughs> the biggest part. He let in the slip world. a campaign email. Uh, I'm just gonna read this. Uh, Tim Walls will be the worst VP oh, in God. history. Oh Does this mean anything to anybody anymore? But okay, even worse <laughs> than dangerously liberal and crooked, Kamala Harris. He's that bad, and he's that bad oh. as in red. He'll unleash hell on earth, <laughs> which is just like so funny. If you've watched like three interviews with this guy, who's like his his the weapon to him, and why I think he's so effective. Why I'm like honestly like kind of excited about the pick. So having watched him, you know, more in the last couple of weeks, he really is a happy warrior, and he his charm is that he is this like Midwestern dad who kind of disarms you yeah. with this charm. And it, there right. is something that feels very genuine about that. Right. He's also to, like a just, hunter and a gun owner and all these things that I think broaden the umbrella a little bit for people that might be attracted to this ticket. So I think it means more coming from him. Like he's not like a liberal elite. You can't I just want, treat him that way. You just made me think like, I want to see Donald Trump go hunting. I want to me see too. like a video oh God, of him hunting. Amazing. Just like a, oh my he's God. got the gun. He's like, yeah. I know how to, I've actually fired many. I love guns. They're the best thing in the world. Guns. I always said that. He's so scared of them. You know, he's just like worried about it, kicking back. Like, I, I'm not judging him. I would be the same right. way. But he's I don't probably talk, talk like a lot of people it. who don't like handle guns. He would be yeah. not at home, Ooh. like uh, in a little, in one of those little, like, little huts you make yourself while you're waiting for like yes. a turkey to walk by or something <laughs> this is a wonderful oh, hut it's actually so a great hut times. smells yeah. a little bit but that's okay we yeah. love smells and it's like he's 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 like tries to fire and ends up like you know shooting somebody else or something it would right. just be very very It'd funny very to watch him good. hunt and I, like I, I challenged trump to come hunting with me and a real yep. hunter somebody who knows how to hunt <laughs> and, and let's, also let's go someone else that sounds like a threat now that i'm saying it out loud it sounds like a threat that i'm like i don't think i so. want to have go, a gun you go there. hunting okay just go hunting, go hunting. He, talks, okay. he loves guns so much go hunting that's all you're saying i that's all i need to say there so i want trump to go hunting and i want it to be documented and i think mm -hmm. it will be the funniest thing in the world the funniest thing in the world so i want to talk about some of the attacks that trump and the republicans are going to kind of throw uh, at Governor Walz. And I, I want to show this clip of him kind of getting in front of these. Yeah. Here we go. Trump is trying to paint uh, Vice President Harris as an ultra liberal. Of all her potential running mates, you might have the most progressive record as governor. I know you were more of a moderate when you were in the House. But you've legalized recreational marijuana, you've passed universal background checks on guns, you expanded LGBTQ protections, you implemented tuition-free college for low-income Minnesotans, there's a uh, free uh, breakfast and lunch uh, for school kids. Do you think your record is an asset to the ticket, or would it risk fueling Trump's attacks as you being a big government liberal? What a monster. Kids are eating eating and having full bellies so they can go learn. And women are making their own health care decisions. And uh, we're a top five business state. And uh, we also rank in the top three of happiness. Look, they're going to label whatever they're I doing. loved that response. Yeah. Just because it's like, it's he's just naming, first off, he's like just naming five awesome things. Uh, and it's it's just such a great response. And it's like, there's just something to the like 
poking holes in some of the Republican talking points, which I don't think Democrats, first off, there hasn't been an effective communicator leading the Democratic Party in years at this point. But having poking holes in some of these Republican policies where they're like, you don't want to have school lunches. And it's I like, know. why Why is that? Why is that? You don't want the kids right. to to be able to have food who it's can't just, afford it? It like, gets lost in like the regular political back and forth. And then when you're like, oh, I'm just saying I'm giving breakfast and lunch to school children. It's like, yeah, how is no, this no. like a political football to be kicked back and forth? It's like, if you can, you should. And, and part of it is like, they're like, well, you know what? Some of the people that are going to get those free lunches are don't need it. They're going to be they're they're going to be wealthy. And then you're like, it's like, but aren't aren't you the same people that are saying you want to cut taxes on the rich? Like, what is giving right. back more? Like, five lunches right. a week or the, like millions and billions of dollars in tax cuts? It's just it's just fucking wild. It's just wild. Yeah. But I, I I really appreciate. It. I'm glad that there's going to be somebody that can actually articulate some of these thoughts right right and that seems like it's been such a big problem for a couple of years now as like inflation has started to go down and the economy although in the last few days there's been some some scary downturns yikes but yeah but but in general there have been some things many things that biden could have communicated in a way that made people realize some of the uh, incredible things he'd gotten done with the infrastructure bill and chips act and all this stuff like for Republican States, Ohio is I think one of the biggest beneficiaries of like these chip manufacturing, uh, the, the money that's bringing supply chains back to the United States, like huge things done for Republican States that I don't think people really realize. So yeah. And to your point, a good communicator what? would go a long way. Okay, what I'm hearing now is you were you wanted a couple more of the. I did that. I, I did, did that. that. I did, I did, I did that. that. That was from me. Biden. Yeah. I did that. Yeah. I did that. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would have that would have been helpful. They would have replayed those, and yeah, Ugh. he would have. He would have. We all would have realized he did that. I did that. I, I want to say a couple more things. Uh, he. Signed last year, he signed a proclamation declaring March 5th Bruce Springsteen Day in Minnesota. Yeah. I got to ask you a question. Are you okay with that? Bruce Springsteen, obviously, New Jersey guy. You think Springsteen, you think New Jersey. How do you feel about Minnesota? Pretty far away. Let's just be honest here. Not close to New Jersey. I think we can both agree. So that's on that the thing I think our listeners would appreciate us clarifying those two states are not that close together they're not that um, close so no. i'm glad that you no. were, were other side of the mississippi super clear on that uh Absolutely. you know does prince have a day prince has a highway or a bridge but should he Maybe, get a I'm day sure before he had a day bruce too. springsteen gets a day in minnesota i mean you get a bridge that's forever a day is one day and it goes and it's in the past and we all know that time we don't really understand it as well as we'd like to so, Wait, are you saying this is one day every year or just one day once? It's one day once. That's how those things work when it's whatever day. Oh. You didn't know that? Yeah. I've officially declared this to be the Good Liars Day in Spokane, Washington. It's only that day. It's not going to be every, you know, August 8th. It's going to be well, just Well, I'm yeah, embarrassed. Just August 8th. I'm, okay. I'm embarrassed. I thought, I, th I thought he was declaring... Bruce Springsteen Day every May fifth. No, no. So what oh, was the question? So, Let's get back to the question. <laughs> the question was just like, do you approve of him doing the Bruce Springsteen Day? Sure. I who assume he was cares? playing a concert yeah. there. Bruce, Bruce okay, Springsteen. Okay, yeah, who gives a shit? I agree. guy who cares. Now I don't want to do a deja vu all over again, but here we are. We have a woman at the top of the ticket. Yeah. Going against Donald Trump, and. The vice presidential pick is named Tim. We had Tim Kaine in 2016. Now we have another Tim here in 2024. How are you feeling about the vibes on that one? Uh, oof. Wow, I, I've thought these things. I haven't really heard them said to me out loud. It's hitting me pretty hard right now. Okay, I was going to say, when I was saying when I, I was thinking when I said it out loud, it sounded stupid. But no, you're saying it's real. You, it I'm really saying, hits you. I'm saying okay, we're okay, talking. Okay. We, we mentioned history repeating itself earlier. Uh, 
That's right. Yeah, it's the, the bear I, cub I thing. A, Again, that happened in 2016 too. Yeah, yeah, that happened that also was, uh, in 2012 and in 20, uh, 2008. Uh, for that was Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Yeah, Ted Cruz. He, he did it, but he snuggled the bear, the dead bear, for hours and hours in a right, day. Right, in his shed, yeah. in his backyard. In his shed, in his he, shed. They found he'd kept the bear there, and he was And it was rotting, it. and he was he was right. eating he warm was feeding it. yogurt. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. feeding it warm yogurt. He was eating warm yogurt. Uh, but that's typical Ted Cruz stuff, so that almost <laughs> it's just, doesn't- It's just that's Cruz cruising. separate from this. That's yeah. Cruz cruising, cruising yeah, for yeah. cruising. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, history repeating itself. I would say that is a little bit of anxiety inducing. There is this like confidence, this excitement uh, to break barriers and a, a woman in the White House and just would be this this sign of, of progress and of just joining the modern world in some ways. Uh, it's scary bringing myself back to expecting that to be the case in 2016 and then being like shocked like most people were, that Trump won. So I don't know. I, I would say at least we have hope, which I didn't have for a while. So yeah. I'll take the hope that I'm getting right now. And I would, you? I would, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happier now. I, I would say that the, the Biden Trump reminded me more of the Clinton Trump than this does now because everyone- Because of his pantsuits. Yeah. Because of the pantsuits, yes, that he would wear. Yeah. Biden. Right. But the, they, they, everyone hated, did not want the election, and no one was excited. And I think now it's like there's actual excitement there going on. There was enthusiasm for Hillary. There was also plenty of indifference, but there was some genuine enthusiasm. I, yes, there was. I, I know. I know. But what I'm saying. saying that there were more double haters in that election, yep. and in this election mirrored that, where it was like there are people. Yep. Most people were not excited. Like a majority of Americans were not excited. Double haters. Is that a phrase haters. you just came up with? Absolutely not. Okay. No, that's a big. That's a big term. That's that's a uh, a PT, a political term that's being thrown around. The being, double uh, double haters, just the people who don't who don't like either candidate, which the election wasn't correct happening. Correct. So have they have they pulled? The DT, the DHs, to see if they've been declining in numbers. Uh, the double haters, Jason. <laughs> it's like, what are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The, the Aaron Judge is all for it. He's excited about the election now. Um, Stanton is excited. I was trying right. to think who was a designated. John Carlos. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, other big guy. The other big guy, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Junior. I don't know. I don't know if he's a DH. So l let's just get back to the topic here. He's almost got to be. I don't know. I haven't looked at the polls. I don't know. I don't know if it's the same people or if it's the if there's the same amount of double hating going on. But you could just the vibes are key, and it seems like people are are more excited now. And speaking so what of do which, you, what rate rate the vibe a month ago versus the vibe now? Just give it a number. Uh, the month ago was. It felt like we were driving off a cliff, if not in the air. Like the car so had already gone 10, off the cliff. What's that vibe? A 10 out of 10 as far as being a car going off of a cliff for that. And this one is a is like an 8 out of 10 that we're on the... We, we've got a car and we're driving it yeah. it's on a road no this is all making sense and we're just about for, 90 yeah. miles away from our destination but we've got a quarter tank of gas possibly and, heading there and we we just we either need to fill up some more gas at some point or we need to just make it through the finish line with just this little gas, the gas that exists okay yes. well, and maybe we got a little more was, gas today it was a to, short analogy but a good one um so better Before, vibes now i guess all right i'm feeling that are you not you don't yeah. feel no i am but i just wanted you to put a number on it you wouldn't do it and that's okay better i put now. a number on it i put a number on it but i did it in my own way because i'm a storyteller okay. devram i think yeah. i've made that perfectly clear that i'm a, a storyteller thank yes. you thank you devram's applauding right now Abundantly. you can't see he's applauding uh two two last two questions uh Vice President Harris has not done any interviews. She hasn't done, yes. uh, you know, long press conference or anything like that. Do you think she needs to be out there more, or do you think they are 
right to be doing this and just kind of riding this momentum as long as I they think, can. Right, ride it as long as you can. And if that becomes necessary, do that. It's just, it's like things are going well. And I think when steam runs out here, she will need to do what she needs to do. But it's almost like, don't, there, there's no reason to take unnecessary risks, I think. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, it's talking to the media as the vice president or potential president taking questions. Is that a risk? Should that be considered a risk at this point? I mean, I, I guess I, I understand ideally why Ideally not, but if it's going well, you just don't don't fix what's not broken. I'm sure that she will have to be out there in a more consistent way before people vote. It's going to happen. But there's like the, this, you know, the news of picking the VP, this all ever, the fun people are having calling Donald Trump and his collection of oddballs weird. And it's just, it's a good feeling. The polls are headed in the right direction. I'm certain she will have to put herself, herself in those situations. But it's like this, they, Republicans are saying, oh, she's hiding. She's hiding like Biden was. She's in the basement like Biden was. They're doing that because they're anxious for the opportunity to pick apart her appearances. Right, 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 right. And so they're, yeah. it's just playing into their hand to rush it. Of course she will have to do those things, but I don't see the reason, uh, you know, there, there's no reason to let Republicans dictate when and how that happens. Okay, okay. That's fair, that's fair. It shouldn't and be I viewed as a, as, a, as, a, as a liability, but I, I don't think they need to rush it. What do you think? Do you disagree on that? She should I don't know. I mean, I... And like you got the good vibes, and that's great. And I think that things feel pretty good from the Democratic perspective right now, and that's great. But also, I feel like you really got to go on the offensive with a message a little bit, which is we won't go back is the big one now. They're so but weird. That's, that's they're so work. weird. That's the big <laughs> one. Uh, that Sorry, I want to stop wonder. you there for one second. Did you see the moment where uh, we're not going back, where that kind of organically happened? At her yeah, speech. from from the Atlanta or the no the speech before that, I think it was before that. Uh, but yeah. regardless, she's giving the speech. She kind of says that phrase, and it's clear that it kind of resonates with the audience, and and it gets a bigger applause than she thought it would. And so she kind of repeats it. It's almost like she's trying to move on, but the audience loves loves it so much that they're on board. And I think it means all these things to all these people. Um, to people who are so sick of Trump's presidency, like the idea of going back to the the daily craziness and the the tweets and you know who's right. getting thrown under the bus today, uh, also to like Roe v. Wade being overturned and actually feeling like we are traveling back in time um, with with and rights. it's the opposite of the Trump message, which is like make America great Look, again. Exactly. It used to be so great, and then this is like a very forward thinking one. Right? Forward. Yeah, yeah. It's I a agree. Forward thinking, it's good. but also, do you think that was organic or not? <laughs> hate to be. Cynical. I don't know. I don't know. I'd hate to be. Cynical. I I kind of think she she. I, I mean, not to not to throw a conspiracy theory out there, but it would just oh, be here good we messaging. Go. But it, it felt almost like she said it, and like it was like they want they wanted this to be the organic moment where the the <laughs> motto of the campaign came out, and I was like, I just thought myself. I, I thought to myself, they could they could have done that. If, if they wanted to, they could have created, fabricated that moment. It totally worked, and it's a great, it's a great motto. It's a great yeah, slogan. Yeah, it's like none of the Biden speeches ever, you know, there was never the battle for the soul of the country, which I actually thought was like kind of a fine thing to say for Did you see that message, people, but. people were talking, it was like, it was like, you know, Obama was hope, and, you know, Biden is battle for the soul of the nation, and then Kamala is brat summer. <laughs> right, right, just, right. just like the the way the world has changed, the way the world is right now. But whatever works, honestly. Hey, people are having fun, and that's all that matters. Yeah, people are having yeah. a good time. Daron, I got a question for you. Yep. How would you like a moment of truth? Oh man, I love these. All right. Do you mind if I take this one today? Calming moment. No, please, please. I'll all right, let's have a moment of truth time. here. We're talking a lot about weirdness today. And this is a very weird time for the Democratic Party right now. It's weird because there's positivity. There's good vibes. A lot of Democrats were depressed about the prospect of Joe Biden versus Donald Trump because they knew Biden couldn't communicate a message. But now it's a whole new world. Harris has selected a VP pick, and Democrats, for the most part, are still happy. People are still feeling good. And I got to be honest, 
That's a little weird that people aren't angry right now. But sometimes weird is good. And that is the truth. Wow. And I also want to say, Mm -hmm. sometimes weird is bad. Sometimes weird is bad. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some of the bad weird. weird. If you're like, this tastes weird, (laughs) that's bad. You were saying that's bad. You're right. That's bad. You were saying we're going to say, we're going to talk about uh, on our bonus episode on Hero Hero, we're going to do a countdown of the top five weirdest Republicans on Hero Hero. That's herohero.co slash the good liars. I think you could probably guess who, in our opinion, is the weirdest, but there's going to be some su- surprises in there too. Maybe, maybe you'll be right. surprised. Maybe, right? maybe, maybe not. But, but the, maybe not. Thankfully, there's no shortage of material for such a countdown. There's a lot of weirdness going on. A lot of weirdness. A lot of so weirdness. Join us a lot of weirdness. for a bonus episode. Hey, we, we got through this recording, Devram. After all of we our technical it. problems, your computer, let's just be honest. Some of we them are self-inflicted, but my computer is freaking out. Guys, this is my second MacBook Pro to have tons of problems. I had two before that with no problems. So Apple, if you're listening. What has changed right. in, that, in that time? Like what programs have you downloaded on there that are different that potentially could be doing this? I think you're gonna you're starting starting to hint at something <laughs> cryptocurrency related, but I'm. Oh no. no, no! I would never do that. I would never do your weird fake money. I would never make fun of you for the weird fake money or the weird. I don't apps have any of it phone. anymore, guys. I lost it all. So hell yeah, jokes on hell you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. I'll give you that mm-hmm. one, Devram. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that one. All right. So if you want to br- buy some Devram coin, I'm selling it right now. I could. You can get yeah. one coin for. Fifty thousand card coins, big which is another thing I'm energy coin. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're not calling it anything. I'm selling it. You don't have any of this anymore. I took over. I took yeah, over. Another, now my just computer's another about cryptocurrency. To crash. I, I, I lost. Yeah. Yes, yes. Devron, before we end this episode, I really got to ask you a question, and I, I want you to tell it to the people out there right now, if you don't mind verbalizing it in some way. Sure, I'll verbalize it. I'm, yeah, you mean by speaking? I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any? Um, words of wisdom for the audience right now. I do. I do. Okay. Carry, you Google it or you, okay, sorry. Carry a fork with you. If someone tries to rob you, pull it out of your pocket and say, thank you, Lord, for this meal I'm about to have and charge at them with the fork. Interesting. Is that a joke from somebody? Just it was on the internet. It was on the it internet. It says okay. boardpanda.com under it. I don't know what that is. No, that's just a But I guess the idea, I I think it it strikes at the heart of, you know, when you're facing adversity, Mm -hmm. uh, approach it with humor, approach Mm -hmm. it with an open mind, and approach Mm -hmm. it, if you have one, with a fork. Mm -hmm. Well said, (laughs) Devon. Really well said. Oh, you're so serious. Oh, my God. That was was really good. That's the most serious expression I've ever seen you have. Yeah. That's really good to roam. Oh, God. I can age like 15 years in one little move. That's Don't really tell Kamala how to do that because if she does it twice, we're fucked. Fuck. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on The Good Liars Tell the Truth. We'll see you next time. Bye.